In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this mist effect using the mist pass in Blender's compositor. Now there's two different type of results that you can get while using this mist pass. So the first one is this result right here, and you can see that it's very foggy and the stuff in the background, you can still see it, but it's kind of just a silhouette and it gets like these different blue colors or whatever colors you want to use. So that's the first effect. I'll show you how to do that. And then I'm also going to show you how to do this effect. So this maybe is a little bit more realistic to the real world. What this does is it kind of just makes everything fade out and fade out and fade out until it's fully faded out just into this fog. You can see that like you can still see the house textures and everything, whereas this one, it's just a pure silhouette. So I'll show you how to create both of these different results. Um, personally, for this scene, I like this result right here, uh, but for some cases, you may want to use this result instead. And before we start, I wanted to thank Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Sketchfab is a 3D model site where you can preview 3D models in your browser. You can even view them on a phone, tablet, or in VR and AR. They also have a huge 3D model store where you can purchase models and assets. You can also apply to sell your own 3D models on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the links in the description. All right, so here we are in this swampy scene that I've created. So there's a few different things that you need to do before we can actually use the mist in the compositor. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to click right over here on the view layer properties. And then right here on passes, you're going to need to turn on mist. Then what you need to do is select your camera, the camera in your scene, and you're going to need to go down to the camera settings. And then right down here under the viewport display, there's two things you need to turn on. You need to turn on the limits and you can see when you turn on the limits, it adds this line here. And then you also need to turn on mist. And when you do that, you can see that it adds these two little dots here. So one of the dots are right there. And then the depth one is the little white dot right there. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go over here and click on the world. And then in the world settings, you can see that there is now this mist pass. So just open this up and you can see that there is a start and then there is a depth. So if I just zoom out here, you can see that the start, when you change this, it's gonna change this little white dot right here. And so what this is, is this is where the mist is going to start. So if you want the mist to not start for a while, you could turn that up and then it won't start to like over here. I want it to start right when you can see the scene. So I'm gonna start it like right here. Now, when you move the start one, it's also gonna move the depth because you can see when I'm moving this one, see this little white one right here. When I move it, if you look right over there, you can see that it also moves the depth one as well. So the depth one, this is gonna be how far the mist is gonna go until it's 100% mist. So um, what I wanna do is I wanna be able to see the house, I wanna be able to see um, the landscape here. Um, if, if for some reason you didn't wanna see like this landscape here, you could just like have the depth one end like right here. I wanna have it like over here because I wanna be able to see the entire scene and then just have it fade out kind of at the end there. So the depth, I'm just turning up that value. And then again, the start one is right here. So it's going across the entire image and you can totally go back and change these values. You're just gonna to have to re-render your scene if you change the values. All right, so now I'm gonna render this out by just hitting F12 to render the scene. And then after that, we'll jump into Blender's compositor and set this up. All right, so it finished rendering. So this is what my scene looks like when I just rendered it out. So now let's go over here to Blender's compositing tab and we're gonna click on use nodes right up there. We're also gonna turn on the backdrop so you can see the background. And then it should already add a render layers and composite, but if uh, you don't see those, you can press shift A and search for them and then add both of those nodes in. Now, before we get too far into setting up the nodes, I'm gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can go to Edit and then go to Preferences. And then right down here, you can go into Add-ons. And then just on the search here, you can start typing in Node and then just turn on the Node Wrangler add-on. We'll be using that while we're setting up these nodes. So I'm just gonna close that now. So now that the Node Wrangler is turned on, what I can do is I can hold down the Control and Shift key and click on nodes and that's going to add the viewer node. So you can see I just hold down Control and Shift and click and it's going to add this viewer node right here. And you can see if I continue to click on the same node, you can see that it's going to go down all of the outputs. 
So you can see that because we turned on the mist, there is this new one here called mist. So if I just continue to hold down control and shift and click, you can see there is our mist path. So it's using that data that we gave it and it's making it black all the way here when it's closest to the camera. And then as it slowly gets farther and farther out, it's gonna get lighter and lighter. If you wanna zoom in the background, you can press Alt V to zoom in. And then if you wanna push the background out, you can press V that'll make it smaller. Okay, so it does look really cool. And this is the data that we're gonna to use to create the mist. So first let's press Shift A and I'm gonna search right here for the mix node. I'm just gonna drop the mix node right here behind the composite and then I can control Shift and click on that to set the viewer to that as well. So what I wanna do is I want the image to go into the image and then I wanna take this mist here and I wanna put it into the factor. On this mist output, wherever it's white, that's gonna be using this image right here, the bottom one, which is this color. And then wherever it's black, that's gonna be using the render layers. So now what we can do is we can click on this and change the color and that's gonna change the mist. So I like to have like a light blue color for this scene. I think that looks pretty cool. You could do whatever you want, um, whatever's best for the scene. Now you can also play around with this even more because right now you don't really have any way to change like the thickness of the mist. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a color ramp. And I'm just gonna add the color ramp in and put it right here in the mist. Let me just bring this up to the top here. So now if I hold down the Control and Shift key and click on the color ramp, we can preview what it's doing. So you can see that as I drag this, it's gonna make everything more black. And remember, the black value means it's not gonna have the mist, and then the white value means it's going to have the mist. So the whiter the image is, the more mist there's going to be. So if you want less mist, you could turn that down. If you want more mist, you could actually turn this up, and you can see now everything is starting to fade away. It's getting harder and harder to actually see it like right there it's so misty you can't really see even that far ahead of you you can just see a few of those little plants and then as you drag this out the mist is going to get more and more subtle so if I just control shift and click on the mix here now I can drag this around and you can see what it's doing so this is really cool and then also if you want there to be a little bit more mist close up what you can do is click on this and just turn the black value up because the lighter it is the more mist there's gonna be so when it's all the way white it'll be all misty but then when it's more and more black it's gonna be more and more the render layers. So if you want things to be just a little bit more misty, you could do that as well. So there we go. That is the first result. Um, let's go ahead and create the other result, which I actually like a little bit better. So with this one, we just faded it out to this color right here. But for the second one, what I'm going to do is instead of just fading it out to one color, I'm going to slowly fade it out to this mist image. So if I just unplug these, just make it a little bit simple, unplug this. So I want the image to go into the top one because we need to have the render layers. And then this mist here, I'm gonna plug it into the second image. So now you can see that it's going to mix together this image and this image. Now, if you change the factor, you can see that it's just evenly changing it between one image to the other. So again, we're gonna to have to use this mist value and plug this also into the factor so that we can use that mist depth to tell it how much mist there's going to be. And there we go. You can see that it's already starting to work, but I wanna play around with this, kind of change the colors, and then also change how much mist I want there to be. So this isn't very hard to do. The first thing that I'm going to do is change the color of the mist. So I'm gonna press Shift A here and search for a color ramp and this one we want to drop this into this mist right here that's going into the bottom image and that way if I control shift and click on it you can see here it is so you can just play around with the colors again for this scene I like this like blue color it looks really cool I really like that look and then for the black here I don't want it to be fully black so I'm just gonna make it like a dark blue so it just kind of starts as a dark blue and then slowly gets lighter and lighter so now I can control shift and click on the mix right here and you can see that's our Already looking pretty cool and then to change how much mist there's going to be I'm gonna press shift a and I'm gonna search for another color ramp and this one I'm gonna drop it into the factor so the mist right here that's going into the factor drop it in there and I'll just kind of bring it up here and then if I control shift and click on this we can preview it 
If it's white, it's going to be using the mist image, and if it's black, it's going to be using the original image from the render layers. So if I just control shift and click on the mix, you can see that as I drag this up, instead of the mist fading away, it just turns into that mist image. So this is where you get that really cool effect. You can especially see it um, on the house right there. It just turns into that silhouette there, that foggy silhouette. So I really like it, it looks really cool. And then again, just like the first one, if you click on the black value you can turn that up and it's going to make everything more and more foggy so even the stuff up close it's going to make more foggy and you can see that as I turn that up it's making the fog that's close up more and more dense so that's really it uh, it looks pretty cool um, I'm going to show you a few different things though that you can do because let's say you want to add more colors in between the fog what you can do is you can just add more tabs in these different color ramps so first let's go down to this one and I'm gonna click on the plus right here and I'm gonna drag this all the way out. And you can see that when I do that, it's actually making it more and more contrasty so we can actually see that better. And then you can change this color too. So if you want to be a little bit more blue, you can see that now, kind of where the house is, that's gonna be this kind of blue color. And then this is just gonna be the very far background. So you could do that if you wanted to. And then the same thing for here. So if you wanna click on the plus again, drag this one up close, you can see that it's going to play around with the colors that are like right here, kind of on that hill there. I can just like drag this closer and closer. You can see that as I drag it really close, it really starts to affect the close up fog. And then again, I can just change this color here. So if I wanted to make it like a deeper blue, and then I could also add another one, add another one there, maybe bring this one out, put this one in between there. You can see it's really kind of affecting the stuff close up. So you can sort of think of this color ramp as these tabs that are really close, they're gonna be affecting the fog that's close up. And then as it goes farther and farther back, um, this back one here, it's going to be affecting the fog that's very far back. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and play around with this one up here, the second color ramp. So you can see that as I drag this, it gets more and more foggy, but you can see that it kind of gets really sharp right here if you kind of drag it closer and closer. So if you wanna have like a smoother transition, you could just add another one and then just kind of bring this closer, bring it really, really close. And you can see now it's kind of affecting this area. And then again, you could change the color. So you're gonna have to be very, very subtle with this. But if you just change it a little bit down or a little bit up, you can see it's going to make it more and more foggy or less foggy. And then again, in the final result that I created, um, I just added like a denoise node just to kind of denoise that. And then I also like added in some different things like a color balance just to kind of play around with the colors and color correct the final image. So as you can see, this mist effect is really cool. It's very easy to set up and it has some really cool results. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope the tutorial was helpful. And if you'd like to support what I do, some really great places to do that are over on my Gumroad and Patreon. I'd really appreciate the support. But again, thanks for watching and I will see you in a future video.